Association. Without further ado, let me welcome star Rusty Schwimmer. Welcome, Rusty. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. Wasn't it great? Um, you know, Rusty, let's start with, you know, why you're in this film. So you, you and I have talked in the past about reasons why you take a movie, right? You know, there's a character you really want to play, a scene you want to do, a director you want to work with, a place you want to go to. You know, what was it when uh, Ani approached you for this film that, that told you this was right? Uh, well, first it was, uh, uh, it started with Kishori Rajan, who is the producer of this, and she, uh, I had worked with her uh, previously on American Fable, which I think was here a couple years ago. And, uh, right on. Um, and uh, I, I always loved Kishori's taste. And um, we were at a film festival with American Fable and I met Ani, uh, Simon Kennedy, who's the writer and the director, and Kaylin Yatsko, who is the uh, cinematographer. And the two of them uh, um, went to film school together in Prague. And um, so I met them and they said, uh, would you want to be in this uh, movie? And even before I read the script, I could tell just by the human beings that they were. Um, and the fact that a cinematographer was a woman, I was like, cool. <laughs> and uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, well, I'll send you a script. And then when I read the script, I was like, oh my God, this is such a good film. Um, uh, I think the fact that uh, Van Dwellers is, is a, a subculture that people are not familiar with, I was fascinated by it, fascinated. And um, it wasn't necessarily the part that I loved so much. I mean, of course I loved Marcy, but I loved the fact that Marcy served this beautiful story. And I take parts of on whether they serve the story really well or not. And um, uh, that's basically how that came to be. We've yeah. seen a, a lot of interesting films this year that deal with what you call real people, which is sort of a novel thing in, in mainstream movies. We saw Gloria Bell this year, we saw Diane right now, which is streaming, and, and now we see this one. I think uh, there's some value in playing real people in the movies, right? And if there is a uh, you know, uh, one school of thought that says we want to escape and be entertained in the movies, but when we see a movie uh, certainly like this, and we see a character like Marcy who's so interesting and complex in just a few scenes, there's some value in showing a real person in, in all of her complexity, I think, right? Yeah, I, I truly believe that uh, films, uh, their job is to uh, put a mirror up to, to human beings and to see uh, what they go through, why the, the choices that they make, what that looks like. And uh, I think the greatest part of, of that is, uh, uh, as an actor, my job is not to judge a human being, but uh, to play them as honest as possible so I can put a mirror up uh, and show uh, the subculture that Marcy is from also. And um, uh, I think the importance of that uh, is, it, it's, it's very important because I think that people, uh, the, yes, they want to be entertained, but at the same time, there's some learning involved, saying, oh, uh, this is what people are like. These are the people that I share the earth with uh, rather than, you know, some superhero, which is good. Superhero stuff is good too, but uh, I like the idea that we can uh, put a mirror up so people can understand each other and then and themselves. You know, Ani has said that uh, we're in a divisive world right now. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. And we see a whole collection of, of different characters here in this movie. And, and to play a character like uh, Marcy, when we think about her, I suppose there's a, a broad and sort of surface way one might play her if they chose to do that. But you you found a sort of different way in. You know, we see. Uh, really interesting, generous, gracious sides of her, and then we see some, some edgier other sides of her. It's not possible for us to look at her and call her a type in any particular way. And in a few short scenes, you, you were able to do that. Thank Give you. us a, a sense of that, will you? Well, first of all, uh, that was a real family. Uh, there were, uh, it's originally 10 children, um, and uh, one of the kids that 
that is in there, uh, he's, a, he's a part of a triplet, and the other two of the uh, triplets didn't want to be in the movie. So then we had eight, and this was a real family um, with uh, amazing Christian values. Uh, I grew up Jew-ish, so, uh, uh, so this was pretty interesting. Uh, I have played five nuns, however, so that's always fun. I, I know my Hail Marys, woo! Um, uh, so what was interesting is we used their home and we used their kids and you know you they welcomed us so beautifully and you know I was so afraid I was gonna swear because when you're on a movie set it's just garbage talk a lot you know give me F and this give me you know that and so I felt like I had to <laughs> really um, edit myself and then after the first day I saw these humans I didn't see a stereotype of a Christian family um, three of the kids are biological and the rest are adopted and uh, this was a true family and really amazing so I kind of used them to work on my character of Marcy. I had all these other ideas before I walked in, and then when I met them, that just all went out the window. Um, yeah. We have to, to mention Sabrina Carpenter in this film. And I work mean, with her. Sabrina, um, right? There's gotta be some Sabrina fans, absolutely. Let me tell you something. That woman, and I will say woman, she turned 19 the last day of shooting which was uh, at the very last shot you see. She turned 19 that day. Um, I was the first one up. All of us were, like I never, you know, I've worked with Danny before and I didn't even get to see him because he was the last one up. So uh, Ani didn't realize when she was writing this how easy it was to schedule everything because we all came in at different times. And so she had a relationship with each one of us. and so. I started out because, um, um, you know, I'm one of those people on the set that likes to have fun. I have a really good time. So um, Ani Kishori knew that I was going to come in there just, you know, guns blazing. And, um, and uh, so I met Sabrina, and I didn't really know anything about her. And I thought, I'm really good at pop culture, but I didn't know anything about her. And I met her and, you know, we went to the Whole Foods in Albuquerque just to get things going. And no one really recognized her because she had brown hair. And I had never met her before. So I thought, oh, okay, little slip of a thing. Um, I immediately liked her because uh, her voice uh, is, is it's, it's, it's not fake. It's right there in, in the chest. And I immediately liked her. And we had a really, really good time. Um, the funniest one, the funniest thing about it was uh, when we were shooting uh, in the, the first scene you see me in that gas station store, um, we were messing around and, and looking at, you know, candy that was probably there since 1982. And we were laughing and she starts, you know, filming things and we do the Instagram thing and we're laughing and she does an Instagram story thing and the next day, you know, I'm on Instagram, but I've got, you know, whatever, followers, whatever, you know, it's like my friends. Um, and the next day I had a thousand new followers. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, well, what's happening here? And then I go on her Instagram page and she's got 15 million followers. So I thought a thousand, that's it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, but uh, I uh, I was shocked, and then of course you know I went into the uh, the uh, interwebs rabbit hole and realized uh, this was a pretty famous girl, and she just didn't seem that way. She didn't have that air about her. I've worked with a lot of uh, movie stars, and she just was right there. Uh, what an amazing uh, young lady. And the work that she did in this film, I think, is awe-inspiring. I think it's all about Sabrina in this, and I'm happy to serve her story.
Someday I want to do a career retrospective with you because we, we know you from many, 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 many things over many years. And, and I think um, I want to call some of those things out quickly and then I am going to get around to a question. Uh, but um, if we all remember some of the things we've seen Rusty in in the last 30 years, and she's been in everything in the movies, and TV, the movies, miniseries, etc. We look back at things like A Little Princess for Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, we look at... Uh, oh, by the way, did you see when uh, we were watching the television and she got to see the end of the movie. It was Shirley Temple's Little That's Princess, right. and of course, Ani didn't tell me that, so when we saw it at Tribeca, the first time I saw it a few weeks ago, I gasped, you know, right. and got a little teary. Right, it was very so, sweet. So, so Alfonso Cuaron, and, and of course, we, we saw you in The Perfect Storm, we saw you in Runaway Jury, we saw you in North Country, we saw you in Twister. Playing the real people. <laughs> That's right, right. Um, you know, what's, a, what's the industry like now for, our, for young actors like Sabrina uh, versus when it was uh, back in that day? You know, what, what is it like? What are the parts like? What's the culture like? It, what, what's it like for someone like her on the way up? Uh, uh, they have so much more control now. Uh, uh, even though, you know, every single minute is uh, scrutinized because of social media, um, which has its uh, pitfalls, but it also uh, gives them an opportunity to show off, you know, their stuff. I think the difference between when I was uh, coming up in it, I think I did my first film at 24, um, uh, we just waited for something to happen to us. Uh, now, uh, to be a young actor, you, you almost have to create your own content. Uh, which I think is an amazing thing because now we have more original stories. We have some really interesting things. So um, Sabrina really gets to create her own content. And, um, if, you know, you're all of a sudden a producer at 25, too, because you created this content. Um, when I was starting, it, it, th that just wasn't happening. Either you were an actor or you were a director, or you were a writer, and nowadays you have to be all of those to really, really have a career. And um, so that's, that's, I think, the biggest difference. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you one more uh, thing here. When we look back at movies like this, and we saw last year uh, Leave No Trace by Deborah Granick, yeah. uh, we might go all the way back to a movie called Vagabond by uh, Anya Sparta which uh, was a couple decades ago, but this is uh, young women uh, coming of age in uh, sort of a tough world, uh, as it were, and encountering a lot of uh, individual people on the road, on the way. Um, and all of those movies are, are made by women. Uh, they were written and directed by women, and this uh, movie certainly is in that ilk as well. And not only uh, is it written and directed by a woman, but as you mentioned earlier, the DP is a, a woman also. Many of the production uh, From team, Arkansas. Right? From right. Arkansas people. <laughs> yeah. So what, what does that uh, mean, and how does that inform uh, the film, particularly now in this moment when you're dealing with uh, you know, so many women on the production team telling this particular story? Well, first of all, the set is completely different. I was shocked. I remember coming on uh, this set. I've, uh, I think the last few m movies I've done has been uh, helmed by women. And um, I remember uh, I came on the set, and I thought, oh, it's really, it was really quiet. And I thought, oh, geez, they're, sh they're, ooh, they're shooting right now, and I'm probably walking into a, a, you know, a shot. And they said, no, no, they're not shooting. Uh, you know, we're in between shots. I said, why is it so quiet? And uh, I, you know, looked around the corner, and, and, and in this particular one, Ani is having a very, very deep, intimate conversation with Sabrina, and then Kaylin, the DP, came in, and then she had another just very quiet conversation. Um, and why I'm telling you this is, it's so much more intimate. It's a, uh, and, and, and it comes out in the stories. The stories become more intimate too. Um, more detailed oriented, uh, that's what I found. Of course, you have exceptions in every, uh, with every person, you can't. I'm, of course, I'm being very general in all of this, but you know, Alfonso Cuaron is very intimate, uh, a, a very intimate um, a director. But for the most part, 
uh, you, you'd be on a set and they'd just be screaming and yelling for no reason at all. <laughs> and they're like, pictures up, you know. Uh, now uh, we had um, we had the second uh, AC, the the second assistant camera, you know, uh, doing the little guy, and uh, she. I can't believe I don't know the name of that. Okay, um, and uh, uh, and it was just uh, okay. Scene two, you know, it was all very quiet, uh, very intimate. Um, I, I think there's pluses and minuses to both. I like working uh, with all kinds of peoples. <laughs> She's, he's, them's. You know, I like it. Um, but it's it it is generally it's a much more intimate thing. Uh, when women are uh, helming the, you know, at the helm. Well, I think we have to wrap. Let's thank Rusty for uh, coming Thank you, out. everybody. <laughs> Thanks. I wish Sabrina were here for you guys, um, but, you know, she's, she's very happening. So, yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, guys.